Well, good evening, and thank you for joining us here at the Friendship Baptist Church, Delaware. We hope and pray that your day has been great and your week has been wonderful thus far. Surely it is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and we shall be glad in it. The Bible says, O magnify the Lord with us, and let us exalt his holy name together. We thank God for you tuning in tonight to our Wednesday night Bible class. And as we all the time say, we hope and pray that this broadcast is helping you and catapulting you to a new dimension, and strengthening your relationship, strengthening your walk with Christ. Because the Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth. Tonight we want to pray. Amen. We're praying for you tonight. We want to pray, especially for our sick and shut in. We want to pray for friendship as a whole this evening, and we want to pray for you that are viewing us, that you that will watch the replay. We want you to know that there is nothing too hard for God. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or even think. Let us pray tonight. Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for this space, this opportunity that you have allowed us to come through the airway. Now, Father, I pray that those that are watching, those that will watch the replay, Father, I pray that you would touch, heal, and deliver them. Let them know, God, you're too wise to ever err, you're too just to be unkind. But, Father, you said in your word, man does always pray and not faint. That even while the season that we're in is a season of uncertainty, but I believe that your word says by your your stripes and with your stripes we are healed and father we thank you for dying on the cross for us that most of all you took our sins and you died for us and you rose again and father we love you tonight it's in jesus name we say amen we honor god as we all say uh, to our deacon warren henderson and to our deacon owens tonight to our minister cheryl and to our minister Maurice, and to all of you, the mothers, the deaconess, the trustees, every person that makes up friendship, we honor you tonight. Listen, if you have not had the opportunity to, please go back to our, this past Sunday, uh, our in-person worship service. Oh, such a phenomenal worship, praise and worship, and, and, and the word of God was so rich and we want you to go back in your spare time go back and view uh and watch and watch the replay of uh this past sunday also we want you to keep in mind that in the, to the month of september we'll be celebrating 90 years as a church ministry and so we have some great things going on so we want you to be abreast of what's going on we want you to be um have knowledge of what's going on. Listen, we love you tonight. Let's go right to the word of the Lord tonight. Want to go right to the word of the Lord tonight out of Proverbs chapter number three. Proverbs chapter three, verse number five and six. It says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. Trust in the Lord with all of thine heart. And lean not to thine own understanding. That in all of thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. I want to title our lesson tonight. Walking uh, with God by trusting him. Simply tonight, I want you to uh, talk briefly and deal with this scripture, this text tonight. And trusting in God. Trusting in God. Here it is that we see uh, that we see Solomon here uh, is uh, Solomon is Advise, has advised his son to live a life of trust in God. 
he, he, he Solomon advises his son to live a life of trust in God. Brothers and sisters, we live a day and a day and a time now where we trust uh, people, we trust our jobs, we're, we trust uh, places more than we trust God. Uh, we trust the, the chair that we sit in. We trust the bed we lay in. But the reality of it is nothing uh, that you should never trust nothing, anything more than you trust God. Because I understand um, that we are in a season, a season of uncertainty. We don't know uh, what's happening from one moment to the next. But the reality of it is... Uh, it is not for us to know what's going to happen, but we we shouldn't have the trust and the faith in God to realize that no matter what happens in our life, no matter what happens in our society, my trust is not in them. My trust is in God. Solomon here has found that God was worthy to be trusted. In other words, God's track record was uh, proven proven to be trusted. We're brothers and sisters. We we once again we we have people. We found relationships. We we found or uh, we form alliances that uh, really understand they they have not been tested through the test of time because time and chance will happen to us all. But Solomon here has found that God was worthy to be trusted. How did he find him to be trusted uh, you will not understand you don't know how uh, how how God or how you can trust God until circumstances come in your life is there anybody tonight that says yes I've had some trouble in my life I've had some problems I've had some issues in my life but the more that I went through what I went through the more I trusted God here it is. It is our nature uh, to put our trust in something or someone, even if it is ourselves. Solomon told us to be consistently or consistently to put our trust in the Lord, the covenant God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That when we study the word trust, trust is translated in Proverbs 3 and 5. It means to lie helpless, face down. It pictures a servant waiting for the master's command and readiness to obey or to defend soldier uh, solely yielding himself to the conquers, a conquering general. Uh, another point number two, it is to trust in God is to be unbothered uh, by themselves uh, and to and to every cre creation and so to lean upon God that he fails there to sinkness with our heart or with your heart you must trust God with your heart if you trust God it is if trust in God is to be true it must be complete uh, to put half of our trust in God and the other half trust in, in, in self or something else is really failure to trust in the Lord all the way. And that we have now we have people that will put their trust halfway in God and when they got one foot on God and one foot on somebody else. But the reality of it is that this is the season, this is the moment that you have to give God one hundred percent of your trust. You say, Listen, God, I trust you, even if I can't see you, I trust you. That we must understand that we should endeavor to give God all of us, all of our trust. That they trust not God at all that do it not alone. He stands with one foot on a rock and another foot upon the quicksand will sink and perish as certainly as he stands with both feet on a quicksand. 
This aspect's trouble, uh, the, the, the aspect of trouble, some because they fear there are some part of their heart that is not truly trusting in God. We may sympathize with the concern knowing that, uh, that in, in perfect people, it is impossible for us to trust in the Lord perfectly. In principle, we gather that Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 6 does not describe an objectively perfect trust in God. But a heart and a life that does not consistently reject or defile God with unbelief. I'm talking to somebody tonight that you might have a season, you might have moments of defeat, you might have moments of rejection, you might have moments that you might defile God with, with your unbelief, but the fool has said in their heart, there is no God. I want to talk to you tonight and ask you what kind of fool are you? Are are you willing to be foolish enough to say, God, I trust you enough that no matter what comes, no matter what goes, my faith is in you. Here it is tonight. That trust is not in uh, a trust is not the mere cold asset of enlightening or a judgment. It is true. It, it is true. Or rather, it is trust with all of your heart. It is a childlike unwavering confidence in our Father's well providing wisdom, faithfulness, and love. And so what we must understand here is that lean not to your own understanding is that you're trusting God with all of your heart means to decide to put away our own understanding and instead to choose to trust God and his understanding, especially as declared in his word. Lean not does not apply or, 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 or lean as a broken crutch. Despite what it means, uh, it, mean, it's, it means by trust. It is on God, not on thyself, that thou art commanded to depend. He who trusts in his own heart is a fool. Self-sufficient, self-dependent self have been the ruin of mankind ever since the falling of Adam. The grand sin of human race is that our continued endeavor to live independently of God. In all of our ways, acknowledge him. Trusting God with our heart means to honor and acknowledge him in all that we do. It is the choice to invite God into our everyday life and conduct. It is to practice the presence of God in, in the regular and sometimes mundane things that happen every day. In all of thy ways, acknowledge him. In other words, the ask the counselor at his mouth, aim at his glory, be evermore in the sense of his presence and light of his countenance. He shall direct your path. This is the great principle of God's response towards those who trust in him in the way described in the previous chapter. When we acknowledge him in all of our ways, he will direct our path in the fulfillment of his will into what is right before him and pleasing to him. More than a few are afraid to have God direct your path. I understand tonight that there are some of you that you are reluctant to allow God to direct your path. You are reluctant to allow God to direct you in what you in because you're allowing what you see to affect what you know. But I want to tell you tonight, don't allow what you see to affect 
that what you know. You know God to be a healer. You know God to be a deliverer. You know God to bring you out. I'm not talking about paying bills. I'm not talking about putting food in the refrigerator. But when you needed God the most, he was there. More than a few were afraid. And some of you tonight are afraid to allow God direct, to direct your path. They would much rather direct themselves. How has it been since you've been trying to direct your path? Let me help you out. Have you been finding yourself running around in a circle? You find yourself running around in the same way. Seem like you're cutting. Seem like you, you think you're making progress, but you're really taking two steps back. But because you can't find your way out of the maze, let me help you out. You will never find your way out of the maze because you did not make the maze. God is the one that made the maze. And because he made the maze, he is the only one that can bring us out. Allow God to direct your path. This fundamentally is the heart that does not trust in the Lord with all of your heart. The surrender heart delights in God's direction and in his path. One of the most frequent uh, uh, asked questions among believers is, how can I know the will of God? It is in principle Solomon gave a wonderful answer in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 6. When we decide to put our trust in the Lord, uh, uh, rather decide to put our trust in the Lord decide not to trust in our own understanding but give intention and priority to God's revealed word that we have to decide to acknowledge and honor God in all that we do that when we do these things we can trust that God will direct our path we can go forward in peace, believing that through his word, through the leading of the Holy Spirit, through the counsel of others, through the godly common sense, and through the life circumstances, God will and has directed our path. We will walk along our way of life and come to see that we have been on this path God intended all along. All along, the G. Campbell Morgan gave his own testimony to the truth of Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. The measure in which I have trusted God and acknowledge him has been the measure of walking in the path of real life. Uh, I want to give you these five points and I'm, and I'm going to be done tonight. How do I become wise? Try something new. Number two, talk to people you don't know. Talk to people from different backgrounds and different perspectives from yours and pay attention to what uh, you can learn from them. Do it, do it the hard way, point number three. Point number four, make mistakes, experience makes us wiser. Point number five tonight, share your wisdom with others. Number one, try new things. Talk to people you don't know. Talk to people from a different background and with a different perspective from yours and pay attention to what you can learn from them. Because let me tell you something. You can learn something from somebody. If you cannot learn anything from anybody, that means you are unteachable. Point number three, do it. Do it the hard way. Don't allow nothing to come to you easy. Put your shoulder into the plow. You, you make mistakes. You're going to make all that sin to come short of the glory of God. But here it is, experience makes us wiser. Number five, share. 
share your wisdom with others. That, that what you're going through is not for you to tuck it in high, but it's for you to help somebody go with what you went through, what you have experienced. There are some people waiting for your testimony because if he's done it for you, he can do it for me. Listen tonight. We have to walk rightly with God by trusting in him. That you have to understand something, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, that you have to learn how to walk in the way God that we can trust him. Then when we look in Proverbs, when we look in Proverbs, from 900 to 700 BC by King, King Solomon and others, that Proverbs was to gain wisdom and instruction from prudent behavior and doing what is right. But the book of Proverbs invite us to make life-changing decisions between wisdom and foolishness. That we must understand that the invitations become alternate between a path of wisdom that leads to life and a path of foolishness, foolishness that leads to death. The Jesus here in Proverbs, Jesus embodies God's wisdom. In 1 Corinthians chapter 130, in him are hidden all of the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. That if you want wisdom and you want knowledge of how to walk in this season of uncertainty, in this season, uh, this time that we as Christians are going through a great falling away from the faith. But I want to remind you that the remnant are yet holding on. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Trust God. And when you cannot find him, when you cannot follow the path that he has prepared for you tonight. Father, I thank you for this word. I thank you for this time that you have allowed us to come and to bark upon your word and to learn and to give instructions and to give uh, give your heart tonight that you wanted us to remind the people that to trust you again and father we, we have no other choice but to trust you again now father we love you tonight and we thank you for this time we thank you for this word in Jesus name listen we love you we want to see you here meet us next Wednesday and every Wednesday 7 p.m. for our Wednesday night word our Bible class listen we we virtual worship we we love you and we thank you for you that have consistent uh, been consistent in our uh, YouTube subscribers and viewing and sending your love listen we want you uh, if you have any prayer requests we want you to um, please, ma'am, please, sir, send in your prayer request, 530 East 4th Street, Wilmington, Delaware. Listen, Delaware, listen, we will pray over your requests. We want to stay in connection with you. We want to stay in fellowship with you. We, we want you to know that Friendship Baptist Church, Delaware, is here to serve you in whatever capacity that you need. If it's prayer, we are here. If you need covering, we're here. We want to offer you Jesus tonight. We want to offer you Jesus tonight. Someone tonight does not know you in the pardon of their sins. And tonight, I want you to repeat after me. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Come into my heart. 
today I decide that I want to make you Lord of my life. I believe that you died. I believe that you rose again on the third day and sent it into heaven and soon to come back. Uh, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. Come into my mind. Come into my soul. Today I confess. Today I make you Lord of my life. Listen, if you said that prayer, welcome to the family of Christ. You, know, you have now completed your first walk in this new walk of salvation. Uh, that we now need to get you into a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. That we're preaching Jesus and Him alone. Listen, we want to offer you Friendship Baptist Church, Delaware. Uh, we have our uh, in-person worship every second and fourth Sunday at 10 a.m. And our Sunday school every second and fourth Sunday begins at 9 a.m., 9 to 10 immediately following our Sunday school we go right into our worship uh, and our virtual worship experience is every first and third when, every first and third Sundays uh, at 10 a.m. Uh, you can grab get to the YouTube listen uh, if you have not and you know someone that is not able to make it to church uh, and you're able to link them to the YouTube channel get them to the YouTube channel and let them know uh, we want to hear from our virtual church. Listen, we want to tell you we love you. And may the blessing of the Lord be upon you is our prayer. Go in peace. God bless you.